Hey, while you in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Let me show you something, bro. Because this is another thing you know, out here. You know what I'm saying? Our people walk around and they don't consider things. They don't ask these questions. Get Isaiah 1 and 3. We have to start waking up and asking questions. It's time to wake up. Let's get that, hold that, Romans 13 and 11. Let's get that, Romans 13 and 11. Sean, right? Hey, I want you to listen to this, Sean. And everybody that's out here listening to this uh, Bible right now. You got it? Romans 13 and 11, is that what I want? This is the book of Romans, chapter 13 and verse 11. Listen to this, Sean. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. It's high time to what? It is high time to awake out of sleep. Well, it's time to wake up, Sean, these last days, bro. No more can we be ignorant to the facts. No more can we be just look a blind eye, turn a blind eye. It's not a good enough to say, I don't know. Well, I didn't know. It's time to wake up. The Lord saying it's time to wake up. Our people out here still sleeping. Our people out here still celebrating Christmas. Y'all forgot about COVID-19. There's a whole war going on on the other side of the world right now. But our people sleep over here. Our people over here sleep. Hey, come out here and build with me, bro. Don't just go drive past. Come on, build with me, though. How about you park the car? Read on. Verse 11. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. So our salvation is nearer than when we believe. Because right now, you didn't know Christ was a black man, nor did you ever consider. But now you have to consider the fact that it's time to wake up. Right. It's time to consider that our salvation is near. Right. Because look at the state of the world right now. We have wars all over the planet. We got diseases. That's how we know we are in the last days. You ever considered, you, you ever heard of the term or anyone talk about the last days? These are the last days, bro. But yeah, we walk around, we wake up every day like every day is normal, but it's not. Look at this. The ambulance ride past it, that is not normal, but we have been accustomed to be to accept this. It's not normal for an ambulance to go f drive up and down here every five minutes. It's not normal. It's not normal for our people to be out here drunk. It's not normal for our people to be shooting each other. It's not normal. Let's get that Matthew 24. Because we have to show you that these are the last days. It's time for you to wake up, Sean. No longer can we live day by day thinking like every day is normal because it's not. The Bible tells us that these are the last days and what to look out for. And what you should be looking out for. What everybody else should be looking out for. You got it? 24. Come on. This is the book of Romans. Excuse me. This is the book of Matthew. Where you going, Sean? These are the last days, bro. All right, you be careful, all right? But we're going to read the scripture because we are in the last days. That's right. Come on. Verse 4. Start at verse 4. Now we're going to read verse 1. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 1. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Verse 2. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he said, Hold on, say, Hey, my, my brother, what's your name, brother? Jimmy, my name is Ariel. Nice to meet you, man. Hey, I was up here talking to the brother that we are living in the last days. Okay, you got your Spanish Bible? You got it. Okay, damn. Hey, uh, tu historia está en la Biblia, all right? Read that thing, okay? See? Si. But let's keep... Mira. Let's see. We got our website. We have Espanol, okay? We have all the classes you can learn in Spanish, okay? These are the last days, all right? See. Gracias. Está bien. Verse 4. 
And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. So that's the first sign that we are in the last days because our people have been deceived. We deceived to the point that we are asleep. We're deceived in religion. We're deceived in politics. We're deceived in money. We're deceived in game banging. We're deceived in fame and fortune. How come being a rapper is the deadliest occupation on the planet right now? I thought at one point being a fireman was the dangerous occupation. They even said that being a truck driver was a deadly occupation. But nowadays being a rap artist is a deadly occupation. It's the most dangerous job out here. Why is that? How come not being a country singer is not a dangerous occupation? How come not being what else? Well, let's deal with the rap though. Because you gotta think about what's being pushed in this rap music. Read that part again. Because the rap music has got us deceived. The rap game has got us deceived. Verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. And the rap music is what's been deceiving our people. They lied to our people. The rap music today ain't talking about bringing our people back together. The rap music is promoting the crime in our communities. The rap music is promoting the drug use in our communities. The prostitution. It is prostitution. Because anything outside of marriage is considered prostitution. But the sad thing is y'all doing it for free out here. Proverbs 1 and 3. We got to get out and stop listening to this rap music filth. And that's why that's the most deadly's occupation alive right now. Talking about shooting, killing, all that. And then the rappers, rap artists get dead, shot down, killed. You got it? This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 1 and verse 3. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. So this Bible out here is to give you instructions on how to live. Guess what? These rappers ain't telling you how to live. These rappers are telling you how to die if you keep following the rap lyrics. Verse 7. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Hey, my brother, what's your name, bro? I'm up here talking about the rap music, right? Hey, I was saying that being a rapper is the most deadliest occupation. Because you got these rappers that's getting killed, pop smoke, PND, PNB. What else? Uh, Lil, uh, bro, my brother from uh, King Von. L, King Von, there he is. You ever heard of these rappers called King Von? Yeah. But what happens when they get killed, right? You have to ask yourself why they get killed. You gotta ask the. You have to ask yourself the music they pushing. Is it positive or is it negative? It's a negative thing, man. It's a negative thing, right? Just like uh, you are what you project, right? You up here talking about violence and getting murdered. What's gonna happen to you? Eventually, if you're talking about living that life, what's, what you think is going to happen to you? Let's see what the, you want to hear what the Bible says though? Because we out here teaching the Bible to our people. It's time that our people wake up to what the words of God say. That's right. Because for far too long, our people been looking up to entertainers. Right. But our entertainers, it's never, an uh, entertainer's purpose is never to uplift and lead the people. Right. It's not meant for a basketball player to lead our people. It's not meant for a comedian to lead our people. It's going to take real men of God to come out here and teach the word and live this word to show others the example. But let me show you the example right here. Because we have to to acknowledge these things. If we don't acknowledge these things, nothing won't change. Yeah, I can't hear what you say. You're the president of the usher board of your church? Okay. Okay, let me, let, me, let me show you this though. Hey, what's your name, by the way? I ain't get your name. Come over here, bro. Hey, hey, me. All right, let me let me let me listen to this before you go though, because yeah, that's an issue. With our drugs are an issue in our communities. Drugs and alcoholism. Watch this though. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Read again. My son, if sinners entice thee. So what's another word for entice? Well, give me one then. What's another word for entice? 
Influence, good. So it says here, if sinners influence you, you read that last part, consent what? Consent thou not. And that's the thing, if sinners influence or entice you, you're not supposed to consent to it. But we have to ask ourselves, what is sin? Because sin is everywhere when you look at it, because it's in our music, it's on TV, it's out here right now. It's drugs, over abuse, alcohol, that's a sin. But it's going to take men to actually step up to that. It's going to take men to actually address those things and point out those things to change those things. I wish you did too, because we out here talking about issues going on in our community. It's worth every time in the world. 1237 South Homer? Yeah. All right, your name is what name? Rob. Rob. My name is Ariel, by the way. Ariel. Remember Proverbs 1 and 10, consent thou not. So we have to stand up for our people, all right? We out here preaching the Holy Bible. We out here preaching that the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, that we're not black. We're not Hispanic. We are the Israelites. Yes, That's our nationality, but we lost that through sin. Go back to Proverbs 1 and 10. Verse 10, my son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. So it says, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. That's the reason why we oppress today overall because of sin. I'm going to prove that. But what, what is sin? What is the definition of sin? What is sin? But that's why we rely on the Bible, because the Bible answers every question. Let's get that First John uh, 3 and 4. Right. Let's get First John 3 and 4. We have to come back to the basics. Bring it out. We have to come back to the root of the problems. Right. We have to wonder why is there violence in our communities? Why is there drugs? Right. When in fact the Bible says, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. That's right. And it's going to boil down to what sin is based on the things that we see and things that's going on in our neighborhoods. Got it? This is the book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Bring it out. Whosoever committeth sin, transgresseth also the law. Come on. For sin is the transgression of the law. For sin is the what? For sin is the transgression of the law. So sin, according to the Bible, is God's laws. Yeah. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.